Well, good afternoon. Always great to be back in Southwest Florida. We're joined by our Surgeon General, Dr. Joe Latipo, Kevin Guthrie from the Florida Division of Emergency Management, Simone Marsteller from the Agency for Healthcare Administration, uh, Matthew Lessig, Associate Executive Director, Cypress uh, Grove at uh, Health Park Florida, and then we have Representative, State Representative Bob Rommel and U.S. Representative Byron Donalds. I want to thank them for being here. We have uh, over the last week been engaging with the federal government uh, under my direction Dr. Latipo pressured them on releasing more monoclonal antibodies they had actually made the decision to not release any Regeneron or Eli Lilly monoclonals and we fought back against that they reversed that decision on Sunday uh, but uh, we have the capacity to uh, administer a lot of monoclonals we did it during the summer the Fed seized control of the supply in September, and as a result of that, we had to purchase some of our own, which we were happy to do, but even the ones we purchased, all the companies are basically under exclusive arrangement with the federal government. So uh, we're here uh, today to say yeah, we would have a site here in Collier in 24 hours if they release more treatments for us. And at the end of the day, if you look at what's going on with Omicron, on the one hand, it's a uh, it's a positive development compared to Delta because Omicron is much, much less pathogenic. It just, it is not creating the same type of serious uh, clinical outcomes uh, on, a, on a per capita basis that we saw with Delta. It's typically upper respiratory, doesn't usually get into people's lungs like Delta variant. Uh, so that is, um, that's something you would rather have Omicron than Delta. On the other hand, you know, Omicron is way, way, way more contagious. I mean, everybody, uh, probably more Americans have gotten uh, Omicron infections in places that have it just over the last three or four weeks than at any other time during the whole, whole thing. And so this is just something that, that's widely prevalent. Uh, we believe that, yes, it's less virulent. Uh, yes, you're less likely to be hospitalized or go to the ICU, but you still have vulnerable people, senior citizens, nursing home residents, the like, who, you know, if they are uh, infected with this, want to have the ability to get treatment. And so we're committed uh, to doing that. We built a great infrastructure over the summer uh, when we had been many months of very low uh, COVID. We had very little demand for it, but we always said we could, we could scale back up very quickly, and we can. And we would have a site in Southwest Florida, an additional one, three in Southeast Florida, Central Florida, Jacksonville, you name it, uh, that will happen very quickly. So we asked for 40,000 doses for this week from HHS. And uh, they didn't give us 40,000, they didn't give us 30,000, they didn't give us 20,000, they gave us 12,000 doses for a state that not only do we have 22 million people who are residents, but at this time of year, we probably have 25 million people throughout the state of Florida when you count snowbirds, when you count tourists. And so that is woefully inadequate for what we need to be able uh, to meet uh, the demand. And we, I would point out that is roughly half of what the federal government sent to New York, which has millions of fewer people than we do. And of course, a lot of New Yorkers are in Florida at this time of year as well. So that's just wrong. Uh, when you politicize things like treatment and give it to states you like and don't give it to states you don't like, uh, that's not leadership. And so we're ready, willing, and able to administer, and we could do four or 5,000 a day easy, just like we did over the summer, really at the drop of the hat. And so we're asking to, uh, to get more supply, and we're here today to say, if we do get more supply, you'll have a place here very quickly in addition to what's already been. And there, are, there is access to it. It's just much reduced from where we would like to be in terms of, uh, in terms of what we're able to accomplish. And over the summer, we pretty much could give it to everybody once we got our site set up uh, who wanted it. Now we're in a situation where we have a fraction of the doses being sent to our state, even though we have more people in Florida right now than we did over the summer. So it just doesn't make sense. Part of this, I think, is because the administration has never really believed in early treatment. I think their view was, remember Fauci said, if you have half the people get vaccinations, you won't have any more COVID surges. Well, how's that working out? I mean, clearly that has not worked. They said, and they put, I think they put all their eggs in that basket. And we're seeing with Omicron, 
that you know the vaccines aren't preventing you from being infected with Omicron. Uh, very highly vaccinated areas have very high rates of Omicron, and that's just the reality. And so you got to take the reality as you see it and make sure that you're able to uh, to pivot accordingly. And I think what we have to do is is recognize that you know there are going to be people that are going to be in, in, infected with Omicron. Uh, vax or not vax, that's just the reality. So they put all their eggs in that basket. Uh, and I think have not been willing to pivot. And, and look, it's um, unfortunately, this was something that in the 2020 campaign, I remember Biden going around saying, blaming Trump for all of COVID, uh, saying uh, uh, 80,000 cases is uh, it's a failure in this and that. He said he would shut down the virus. That's what he said he would promise to do. Well, now we're in a situation where that's not even close to have been true. Uh, and I think that they're trying to find uh, kind of people to blame. He had said he'd shut down the virus. And then he said it's really a state's responsibility. But you can't have it both ways. I mean, you can't say you're going to do it, not do it, then say, oh, well, it's really the state's responsibility. But then kneecap us from being able to respond in the way we want to respond. So we're uh, going to continue pushing this because we think it's very, very important. We also, uh, in, in Simone Marsteller can talk a little bit more about this. Because you have Omicron that is very easily transmissible and, and generally very mild, you know, you're going to have people who go into hospitals for other reasons, and the hospitals are testing everyone. You're going to have people test positive and then be categorized as a COVID positive patient. And so what we've asked uh, hospitals to do is what really should have been true from the very beginning is to distinguish between people who were hospitalized due to COVID and people who are simply hospitalized with COVID. And if you look at that, uh, some of the different health systems around Florida, Jackson Hospital, biggest one in Miami-Dade, has been putting out, and they basically have half of the people who are COVID positive in their hospitals aren't being treated for COVID. They came in for another reason and mostly are asymptomatic. Uh, Orlando Health, and big system in Central Florida, similar, 50%, and Tallahassee Memorial up in Leon County, uh, they estimate 60% of COVID positive people in their hospital system are not being treated for COVID. They're incidentally positive. And so if you look at, we've been between five and 6,000 COVID positive individuals in Florida hospitals, you know, over the last uh, four or five days. Uh, but I think you'd probably have to say 40%, between 40 and 50% of that are not being treated for COVID. And that's much higher percentage uh, than we've seen in previous waves. But I think it's a function of Omicron and, and how it acts. Uh, finally, uh, 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 Joe Latipo, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, and then Kevin Guthrie for DEM. You know, the federal government promised that everyone would be getting at-home tests. They would do all this stuff. They haven't really done anything uh, that, that we can tell. And so we're going to step up and fill some of that gap with the at-home, focusing on nursing homes, senior communities, so that they're able to uh, – basically, our philosophy is – uh, you get tested. If you have symptoms, get tested, figure out what it is. And if it's COVID, we want to get you treated for it. And, and we want that to be as easy as possible. So we're going to be having uh, an announcement uh, on. It's just a matter of, of how many. But we are going to be able uh, to deliver some, some at-home tests around the state of Florida. But they've not delivered anything uh, thus far. And so we're having, again, to fill the gap uh, where, where the feds have, have not been, been able to do. Uh, and DEM, just over the last six months, we, for, we fulfilled about 1,500 requests uh, from local communities uh, for testing support. And uh, it's been, been, been an awful lot of, of, of stuff that's been pushed down. So we're happy to do that, and we're happy to, to be able to help. So let's get all hands on deck. Let's make sure we have these treatments. I think that uh, fewer people will, will probably need it just because of the as, as Omicron becomes more prevalent, I think you will see less clinical outcomes, but uh, there, there may be people that, that need it, and we want to make sure that, that we're there for them. So I'm happy to be able to say that we, we, we uh, anticipated we may need to, to have more. Uh, we have the infrastructure in place. We've got a lot of resources that the legislature, at my request, set aside in the fall uh, to be able to do it. All we need is access to the treatments. And if you're not going to send us treatments, at least open up the market so we can purchase them ourselves. And we'll be happy to do that, whether it's the Citrovimab, Regeneron, the Eli Lilly. 
uh, we'll, 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 we'll do it. I mean, we probably would do the citrovimab be just because of the um, people think it's really effective against Omicron and Delta, which is great, but we do recognize there's still Delta and those other uh, medications were very effective for that. Okay, we have Joe Latipo, Surgeon General, gonna come up and say a few things. Hey, buddy. Yeah. 